Weapons and Tactics Instructor Course is designed to provide an advanced tactical training scenario for our Fleet Marine Force units and their sponsored Weapons and Tactics Instructor candidates, or their PWTIs. The WTI course serves to train individuals in order to become training officers and go back to their Fleet Marine units. The Weapons and Tactics Instructor course consists of about seven weeks. Three and a half weeks of it is an academic period of instruction, and then three and a half weeks is a flying instruction. So seven weeks total designed again to produce WTIs to support the fleet training. The purpose of a WTI is to serve as a training officer in a fleet unit. So a WTI will graduate the weapons and tactics instructor course and then he'll go back to the fleet and he'll serve in those key training officer billets throughout the Marine Corps in every squadron. His purpose is to develop a training plan for that squadron in accordance with the weapons and tactics training program as well as to meet the intent of the commanding officer of that unit for his training and guidance. He also serves as a platform SME, a weapon SME, a mission planner and integrator, and a joint integrator uh, to help that unit integrate into a joint environment. He'll also serve as a tactical risk manager for that unit, particularly when it comes to training and combat operations. To fully operate a WTI course requires support from a wide variety of sources. Particularly within the Marine Corps, uh, MOTS-1 consists of about 220 officers and uh, enlisted Marines. We're very top heavy, but those 200 to 220 folks are the core of MOTS-1. And then when WTI happens, they form the nucleus for all of the supporting units that come in. The field units will come in and we'll bring in an entire Marine Air Control Group, elements of Marine Wing Support Squadron, all to help support WTI operations. We'll also bring in units from the Fleet Marine Force, i.e. aircraft. MOTS-1 doesn't own any aircraft, so the Fleet Marine Force will provide aircraft in order to sponsor the WTI course. So with that, they send the maintainers and all the different support units required. All those elements in the Marine Corps will come in to help support WTI. As far as training goes, WTI is characterized by advanced tactical training that encompass full spectrum operations. So what that means is when units come here and individuals train to be a WTI, we expose them to mission sets that they perhaps haven't seen before in order to prepare them for combat. Our goal is to train a WTI and have him see the full spectrum of operations so that he's prepared for anything when he goes back to the fleet. Particularly, we try to enhance the training here at WTI by bringing in advanced threat systems to provide that advanced training. And then with all the assets we have that support WTI, we bring them into Yuma, Arizona, combine them together to perform a large force exercise uh, in terms of the actual events that we do. During WTI, we have a number of major evolutions. Most of our major evolutions are based or plan and form, meaning they are the scenario that the event is built on, the threat that the uh, scenario simulates, the type of mission that we do in that event simulates a real-world mission scenario or a plan that we have. First, to start off with some of our major evolutions, we'll do uh, Assault Support Training 1, which is basically a uh, raid or a CAS event, company-level raid in the 2507 South, utilizing Helleborn assets as well as fixed-wing support platforms, unmanned aerial systems. We'll integrate cyber warfare into that. And then the students will start to advance to Assault Support Training 2 and 3, where they'll conduct a dual-site raid in AST-2, and finally a dual-site non-combatant evacuation operation in AST-3. For AST-3, we'll bring in a, a number of outside support assets to include uh, the Department of State, as well as other support entities. We'll utilize an OP-4 comprised of role players to help facilitate that dual site neo evacuation. And we'll do that throughout the town of Yuma, coordinating with the Yuma City Council, as well as 29 Palms to execute that dual site neo evacuation. So those are some of our major evolutions, and then we'll to top that off with Finex Week, where we'll do three uh, final exercises called Finex 1, 2, and 3. For Finex 1, we'll start off with a TAC Air strike against a target set up in the Nellis Tactical Training Range that will set the stage to facilitate battalion level assault out of YPG up to 29 Palms uh, to integrate all of the assault support platforms with the uh, battalion. In this case, it will be 3rd Battalion, 3rd Marines. Then they'll do a battalion level insert into 29 Palms. FinX2 will be a strike coordination or a constant exercise along with close air support in a raid in the 2507 north and south. And then FinX3 
is a combination of a strike as well as a, a battalion insert and extract into the 2301 East and West. WTI is important to the Marine Corps because of the product that it produces. For a training continuum within the Marine Corps, one of the cornerstones of WTI, again, is the production of that weapons and tactics instructor that goes to the fleet and serves in that training officer billet. That weapons and tactics instructor is the training expert and the continuity in the fleet to ensure not only that his unit is trained, but that adjacent units can be assessed or helped to train them as well, and then serve in key staff officer billets to help facilitate training throughout the Marine Corps. They do that in a number of venues, whether that be a Marine Air Group Weapons and Tactics Instructor Billet or in a mass role in the Marine Air Training Standardization Squadron. All those billets will help ensure that Marine Aviation Units continue to train effectively and more importantly, they're standardized across the Marine Corps.